Hi, in this short video, I'm going to show you my retouching workflow. Now, the reason I think you need a good workflow is because it makes you faster, it makes you more efficient, and therefore you will be more valuable for your clients. Now, my retouching workflow is not the only workflow. This is just what has worked for me throughout the years. So let's get into it. The first thing we are going to take a look at is folder structure. Now I created this mock project folder on my desktop so that I can take you through my folder structure, the one that I usually use. Always in my project folder, I have at least two folders for client projects and personal projects. The insides of those folders are basically the same. So let's just jump into the client one. Now inside the folder, I always have these individual projects following the exact same naming pattern that you see here. It starts with the date in the format of year, year, month, month, and day, day. Then that's followed by the client's name and the project's name. And just to give you, you know, a better idea of what that would look like, let's just create a new folder with today's date. I'm going to name the agency Smith Agency and the project matrix. And this is what it would look like. So let's just jump into it because there is also other folders in size. Now inside all individual projects, I have these certain folders. I always create them with, with a batch script, but you can create them manually or you can use any sort of automation. What's really important for me is that I actually number these first three uh, folders. They are very important to me and this is exactly the workflow and the way I go through them because when I get raw files from the client, they all go into the raw folder. Now these don't all have to be camera raw images. They can actually be JPEGs. They can be TIFFs. They can be any file I still have to work on. That goes into the raw folder. Then the second edits folder is where my edits, my PSDs and my PSBs will live. So I bring in raw, raw files into Photoshop and once I save them, they start to go into the edits folder. After that, if I have to export anything for review or because it's finished or for any other purposes, they all go into the export folder. This way, I always know where everything is and it's easy to find everything. Now, the last two folders, I always call them optional. Whenever I get the client notes, either on screenshots like some scribbles or any sort of written notes, they all go into the notes folder so it's easy to find them. And then if I get spreads afterwards, like covers or billboards, you know, anything with the graphical elements, they're usually PDFs, then they go into the spreads. Now, the reason they're optional is because I don't always create them. They are just sometimes there. Okay, I know that this is, you know, this is the boring part, but it's quite, Im quite important for you to stay organized. However, in the next step, we are going to dive into Photoshop. So now we are inside Photoshop, more specifically Adobe Camera Raw. And that's how I like to work with my raw files. That's where I do my raw conversion. I hardly ever use Lightroom. I don't use Capture One at all. And there are some software packages that I have to use for Hasselblad files and, and some of those uh, more interesting formats but mainly I like to stay in Adobe Camera Raw. So the first step is I pull in all the files that I need to make sure that they match, for example, these three images in this case, and I start working on them, working on the balance, working on the exposure. I always make sure that I work in 16 bits because even if the, uh, the base image is in eight bits, I need 16 bits because if I'm doing any modifications on top, I don't want those to cause any further banding or introduce any banding, and I work in Adobe RGB color space because anything bigger than that, like Pro Photo, you don't need that. And anything less than that, like sRGB, is also going to introduce banding and artifacts. And here is where I make my adjustments. So let's say uh, I pick a hero image and I would just go through them and make sure that they look quite similar. And now the other thing that I also like to make sure, and this is how I work as a retoucher, and there are of course, other workflows out there is that I make sure that I have all the detail possible. So I just, I just, you know, pull down the highlights if I have to, I pull up the blacks if, if they are clipping. Later, I can always crush them. Later, I can always mess around with the dynamic range. But I like to start with an image that's quite neutral and have all the details. So I don't really set a look here. I just make sure that everything is the same. I can always set a look later, but because I work with clients and I don't work on my personal images a lot, I tend to just shoot for the neutral and then just go with what the client wants. After I picked 
and and make sure that everything is kind of the same um, so let's say I pull down the highlights on this one I elevate the blacks I just make sure how much it matches it probably needs a bit more contrast in that sense just for it to match which is not something that I always introduce here but for matching purposes and for this very quick demonstration it's fine so I'm just making sure that I have everything that I can work with these two kind of match I think I mean I can still pull these things down Again, okay, this is not a demonstration of the raw conversion. It's more for uh, general purposes. So then I pick an image that I want to immediately work on and I just open it. I don't open it as a smart object usually. I just open it as is. When I bring an image into Photoshop, the first thing I do is I have an action that creates a certain setup for me. I almost always do that except for very exceptional projects where I am creating a new folder structure that I can uh, work with but normally I just come into Photoshop I hit my setup button and that creates these folders for me now these folders are here because they make logical sense both to keep track of what I'm doing and the way Photoshop works so the first thing that you can see if I expand this uh, group of groups is the uh, texture group. Now in the texture group, I have my healing layers. I put any clone stamping. If I want to liquefy early on, I do that there. Any sort of comping, anything that has to do with, with changing pixels directly, not just manipulating their attributes, but actually changing, pushing uh, pixels and all of that goes into the texture. This is the first thing I do. Now, after that, I go into the tones. Now in the tones, all I do is basically change luminosity values. So in the local dodging and burning, I do local dodging and burning, which just means that I zoom in and I make sure that I even out certain uh, tones, certain skin and, um, and, and other parts of the image, essentially. So I'm just creating an evenness and, and something that helps me maybe uh, blend in the things that I did in the texture part. And then the global dodging and burning is more about creating a global balance. So I'm just trying to make sure that everything I do in Photoshop uh, draws the, the eye of the audience to the focal point, the main focal point, uh, point of the um, of the image. So this is, this is all about tones. Now, after you're done with the tones, you can move on to colors. Now, in the color section, I have two distinct uh, groups. First is color correction. Basically, color correction is when you neutralize your colors. You just make sure that they are, well, quote unquote, correct. And then once your colors are at like a neutral point or at a mutual point, if you compare it to another image, then you can go and do your color grading. Now, inside my color correction, I have a couple different groups first. So I can um, correct the saturation, which is usually something I do. Then I can uh, correct the hue, which is another thing that I do. And the MISC CC is just, is just miscellaneous uh, color correction. I, I put everything in there. But the, the reason I have so many groups is that I can just collapse them. And once they are collapsed, they just don't take up more space and it's easy to work. And then, as I said, color grading, it's empty, but I put a lot of stuff here that just help uh, accentuate a certain mood or just make sure that an image fits with the mood board that the client provided. So this is, this is all color. And then there is like another one which isn't for the image itself, it's just, it's just a help group that helps me see certain values. Um, this is similar to uh, what I have on my Gumroad page, the utility lots that helps you um, see all aspects of your image, like luminance, for example, if I turn that on, or uh, saturation, for example, which shows you how saturated each area of the image is uh, in relation to each other. And then there is hue. And after all of that, there is solid curve, which just helps you see um, if you need to do some further cleanup. But this is just my help group. This is something that I can actually just throw out because this doesn't influence the image. It just helps me while I'm retouching the image. So this is this is my group. And after I'm like, I, I started working on the image, I just go into save and I go into not my raw folder, 
but I go out here and I go into my edit and save it as is. So I just I just keep the the name of the file because the photographer and the client they are familiar with that name. So I just keep the file. I save it as layers and of course in Adobe RGB and just hit save. Once I want to export, once I'm basically done with the image, I'm just going to do like a, a command or control plus shift plus S, so like a save as, and I put that file into the exports folder. Now the way I do that is usually a TIFF file and I just make sure that because this is a retouched image, I just go underscore and R. Now this just lets the client know that this is an image that was uh, worked on. This just means that this is the initial retouch. Now, as we iterate and we go to other versions, I just start tacking numbers after this. So it's going to become R2, R3, R4, and so on. It depends on how many revisions uh, you provide to your client. But this is, this is how I'm going to export this to TIFF. And then of course, without layers. If you want the uh, the structure, the groups here, you, you can download that. The link is in the description. That's totally free. If for some reason you want to get my uh, uh, lots that help me see these different attributes of the image, just head on to my Gumroad page and you, you can get it there. It's really phenomenal. I really love working with them. It just makes life so much easier. But yeah, other, other than that, the, these are the things that you have to pay attention to. Again, this is not rocket science. We're not curing cancer. It's just something that helps you be organized. So still part of it, adapt all of it. Just make sure that you have a, a system that you can work with. If you like this video, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.